morning, church. God is good and all the time. Church, today I want to talk about how the Eucharist is God's divine mercy for you. Together. The Eucharist is God's divine mercy for you. Can you say it to the person beside you? The Eucharist is God's. Jesus wants to enter your wounds. Jesus wants to enter your wounds. Can we say that together? Jesus Church, what kind of wounds are you carrying right now? What kind of struggles and pains are you, what kind of crosses are you carrying right now? Probably the signs of aging are coming. There's things that you were doing last year or five years ago that you cannot do anymore. Perhaps there is still that resentment and guilt and shame or that addiction that you cannot run away from, or that relationship that is just dead. A relationship with your spouse, with a family member, an adult child that you have. Perhaps you were just told that you have cancer, or that a friend is dying. Perhaps this continuing disease that you have of the body is debilitating you slowly. What kind of wounds are you carrying? Today we hear this gospel resurrection story in which Jesus has shown himself to the disciples. And out of fear, because his friends thought that they were going to be the next one, you know, to be arrested and killed, they all fled in fear, huddled together. You know, and probably there's also that shame and guilt. I mean, you know, Jesus was their best friend, their leader. And in his time of need, they were not there. Church, how would you feel that, you know, in your time of need, your family or your best friends are not there? How would you feel? Huh? Poor. You are quiet. <laughs> How would you feel if you see this person at Caputo's? <laughs> ah, ah, wh wh what would you do? Huh? Bite them? <laughs> I would do worse. <laughs> so when Jesus, in the resurrection stories, when Jesus would appear to them as if from nowhere, his first words were what he did not say, hit the road, Jack. What was his first words always? Peace be with you. Huh? Love that word. Peace be with you. He is so different from the gods of Rome and the gods of Athens, in which if you tinker with these gods, these gods will come down and kill you. These were, this words were words of forgiveness, of divine mercy. Peace be with you. And then he starts calling them brothers. Like, you're a family. Huh? And then he showed them his hands, his feet, his, his side. And he asked them, come on, touch me. It is really I. Do not be afraid. What? wounds are you carrying right now? Because whatever wounds you are carrying, two steps, brothers and sisters, we are meant to recognize that pain. Huh? We are meant to recognize if that wound is still bleeding, if that wound is still festering, to embrace the pain and second step is this, and to give it to Jesus. Huh? Some of us are still ignoring that pain, ignoring our miseries, thinking that it's just going to leave. Or probably have blinders here, you know, oh, this is not me, this is not my pain, this is not my shame, this is not my guilt. Huh? Or, 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 
or some of us would not even hold up this wounded heart that you have and say, this is me. This is where I am right now. And some of us are afraid of the next step, of bringing it to the light of God's love. Why? Because we live as a church, as a community, as a family, as a nation, as human beings, always judging ourselves in the darkness of our fears, guilt, and shame. And some of it are so toxic that we give it to the people around us. Church, there is a reason why in Catholic churches, we have a center, the crucified body of Christ. Not only the cross, but the crucifix. Did you know that for the first 370 years of the church, we had no crucifix? The early Christians were so embarrassed that their Lord and Master died at the greatest torture invented by the Roman Empire, only reserved for the worst criminals. No necklaces like this with the crucifix. No. Huh? But it is the wounds of Christ, says the book of the Hebrews, that heals us. There is a connection between this crucifix and this table we call the altar. Because around this table, around this altar, in front of that crucifix, we gather as wounded people, broken people, sinful people, struggling with our very selves and with our day-to-day -day lives. And we are invited, all of us, to bring not only our gifts, not only our joys, not only of the things that we are proud of, but to bring our shame, guilt, sickness, and struggles at the altar. And once again, Jesus brings that on and offers it to his heavenly Father. By his wounds, we are healed. No wonder Jesus is inviting us, let me enter your wounds, let me enter your shame, let me enter your darkness. For God is not afraid of our past. God is not afraid of our regrets. God is not afraid of death. God is not afraid of our worst shame there is. He wants to enter them through his own wounds. We are healed. No wonder the greatest sacrament of divine mercy is the Eucharist. For in the Eucharist, God breaks himself. In the Eucharist, God pours himself once again because of his deep love for you and for me. Church, can we bow our heads in prayer? And if your loved one is beside you, please hold their hand. And as you close your eyes, I want you to acknowledge the wounds that you have right now. I want you to name them in the silence of your heart. And I want you to bring them to Jesus. Because he wants to enter your wounds. Jesus, my Lord and Savior, thank you that you are our divine mercy. 
thank you that the Eucharist is our divine mercy. You are not tired of pouring us with your mercy. We get tired of asking for it. Jesus, forgive us once again. And at this Eucharist, as we offer everything, we offer also to you our darkness, our pains and struggles. Come and share with me the Father's greatest gift, which is his divine mercy through you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.